problems with my Fluke Bench Digital Multimeter. Well, good afternoon, YouTube. 12.43 in the afternoon on a Monday. I'm back here on this Fisher. As you can see, I do have the board out now, all clip laid in and all that stuff. Um, I basically wanted to do this so I could do some work on it and also do some voltage checks and things like that. And that's uh, started my problems. <laughs> I uh, I use my, uh, let's see if I can get this up here. Okay, you can see there in the background my fluke meter, which uh, has been very good for me so far. And uh, I uh, was using it to uh, do measurements. I had the uh, the ground lead from it, the negative lead, whatever you want to call it. This one here. Clipped over here on the uh, this point right here. It's ground on the chassis which runs to the uh, let me show you that. Runs to right here. Had that all connected and that was my ground. And uh, then I took the positive lead and touch different spots, you know, to get my voltage readings. Well, <laughs> what I was getting was the uh, meter would go up, you know, to, uh, I don't know, whatever the voltage was near the voltage, I should say, and it would immediately come right back down and end up coming back down to zero. So I thought, well, that's not right. So, uh, I thought, you know, there was a ground problem, obviously. That's usually the case in a situation like that. So I got to checking, and uh, there are two. Let me turn this around a little bit. I don't have this plugged in, so it's no big deal. There are two grounds here. You see, these. this here is on two pins. I only had it hooked up to one pin before. And on this board, it takes both pins to make sure it's getting the ground. Uh, the reason being on that is if I can get I can't get back on there now. Uh, anyway, I'll put it back on there. Uh, same thing on the other end. There's a this this uh, right here is over two pins. Now, um, if you look on the uh, schematic, which I'll show kind of briefly here. There are several grounds on this. There, there's a ground right there. Let me use a, this. Okay, there's a ground there. There's a ground there for the audio input. And there are two grounds right here. So, you know, those are all supposed to be grounded. So, in order to get them all grounded, you have to ground all those pins. Well, there's, there's ground here, and there's a ground on each one of the audio inputs. And there's these two grounds here and the two grounds there. So they all have to be, and if you look at the uh, back of the board, you can see where they all go to something. So they all have to be hooked up, and I, I only had, I, I was basically missing two of them. That's what I was doing. So I thought, well, there's my problem. <laughs> and I hooked all this up like you see it now with the, you know, across both grounds and things like that. And I thought, now we'll get somewhere. So uh, I proceeded to take some more readings, and the same exact thing happened. So <laughs> I thought, well, in order to eliminate the uh, problem, what we will do is take a new meter and hook that up. And lo and behold, when I did that, I got the proper readings. Everything came out perfect. And I thought, well, that's strange. So the only thing I can conclude is the fluke uh, meter leads are bad and these are leads I made so uh, I'm I'm assuming that is the problem with it and I'm hoping that's the problem because I don't really want to think about my meter being bad but you know that's possible too so what I'm going to do is take turn it off first and take these meter leads out and probably use this this one here to test them so we'll basically hook one end to here and the other end to here 
and see what happens. Nothing. Okay, that's <laughs> that right there tells me that's bad. <laughs> uh, how else would you read that, right? It's trying to do something, obviously. There you go. Now it's getting there. Yeah, there's just some bad. I think the other. Let's test the other one just to be sure. But uh, let's see. Whoop! Can't hold it on there. I got things falling off, going crazy here. There we go. Okay, one. Yep. I'm just not getting a good connection on it. Let me let me hook it here and see if I can get this. This will be better. I hope. There we go. Now. Okay, 1.7. But I'm going through several clip leads, so that's probably accurate. I would say. But see, each time I even touch it, seems like it moves. So I'm thinking we have a bad something or other here. It may be the uh, banana part of this. Let's see if I can get up here. That's where I was touching at. See, that's what it, what happens when you do that. So this these leads are definitely no good. Now I did make these, but like I said, I used you know the Chinese connectors, and I may have to put some good connectors on there and go from there. So pretty sure that's my problem with that, and I'm hoping that is true. And uh, turn this off. Yeah, beep beep beep. So that's the first thing I want to do is get that fixed because I like using my fluke because I've got it just for you know a, a bench meter and this is where I'm at is on the bench. Uh, the uh, new meter, you know, and my portable DMMs like this are fine if I you know need a second meter, but uh, I like to use the other one for the purpose that it was intended for. So that's going to be my project for this video is fixing these leads. So stay tuned. Hey, what we got here is the uh, first order of business I plan to do is to visually inspect these uh, alligator clip leads and and uh, to do that we want to take the cover off and that may be easier said than done apparently. Let's try this way. There's one of them. I think you can see that is soldered as good as it can get. I, I try to make these as, as, as good as possible when I create leads like this. And I did use my, I think this is 20 gauge wire that I bought especially for this. So let's uh, put the cover back on this one. Uh, hopefully. There's that one. Now let's take the uh, negative side. See if we can do the same thing with it. I'm also trying to. Uh, yeah, that one's kind of ripped up a little bit. Isn't it? That is rough on your fingers, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. All right. Now that one. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Ah. Oh. Well, there's your problem, lady. Now, can you see that? I think you can. So, that actually, uh, I thought was a good solder joint. Uh, it looked like it was, but uh, apparently it's not. So what we'll do is uh, get this off and tin that up and put that back in there, and that will be a fix for that, I hope. I don't think there's any need to go any further. Now these on the other end, where are they at? These are screw connections. What I usually do on these is uh, uh, tin the end of the wire, stick it in there, screw it down tight to the, uh, you know, connection, and then 
and that has been holding up very well. You know, you can see right there if it if it doesn't come out, if it doesn't, you know, it's not loose. Well, now that one is a little loose actually, but I don't know if that's the. I think that's yeah. See, that's that there part there. That's different. So this has got a little bit of play in it, not too much. But see, as long as you can't get those out, that's screwed in there good. So I'm not going to worry about that. And like I said, I'll have to turn my soldering iron on and get that started and we'll fix it up. Hang in there. Alright, what you can see here is the freshly soldered joint there. I've got the clamp around the wire and I retend both the um, alligator clip itself and the wire and then I put that in there. I clamped it down with the clamp and soldered the heck out of it. <laughs> uh, should hold, I hope. It's very solid in there right now, so I'm hoping that'll be the end of that. I'll put my new, or put my uh, uh, insulator sleeve over the top of the clamp, and then we're gonna test it out. Stay tuned for that. Okay, you can see the uh, fluke is on uh, ohms, and I've got it on the 200 range, lowest range. And here are my leads. Keep your eye on the meter. Put them together. There you go. Point two. I'd say that's pretty good connection. I don't think we'll have to worry about that anymore. So uh, that part of it is fixed. Now <laughs> I want a little update on this. Um, apparently this uh, internally I've got a problem with this fluke. Um, yeah, I just want to verify I had the button push right. I. Uh, I tried uh, the new leads that I or the leads that I fixed, and I got the same problem. And so I I double checked with the other meter. The meter, other meter was fine. Uh, so I put a different set of leads on this. Uh, what I thought was a known good lead, they they measure good. Of course, those do too. Come to think of it, so I don't know. But anyway. Um, I'm still getting problems with it. It still goes to zero. So this problem with this fluke must be something internal because it's not reading correctly. Apparently the uh, ohms read fine. As you, you've seen the, you know, I can do it again. Hang on a sec. There's the uh, connection down there for the uh, probes that I'm using. And you can see there is the result. It works just fine. It's on two ohms. Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Two hundred. There we go. Because there were, there's our reading, 1.2 ohms, and that should be about accurate for those leads. And uh, like I say, that seems to be working. I uh, don't know if it's just DC volts. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, obviously there's no problem with the uh, leads. Uh, well, there was a problem. Obviously, we saw saw the the bad connection on the other set, but uh, this I don't know. I, I really don't. So I'm going to have to do some other further investigation on this before I call this good. So uh, we may have another video yet before the other one. So I don't know. We'll see. All right. Let's come back to your other video. Let me uh, recap on this here while I'm here. Okay. Some of the things I've done besides, uh, uh, like I said, I had the other meter going and I did check voltages. Most of the voltages, well, I say most, I say all the voltages that I checked were pretty close. I mean, you know, any any circuit you guys know that work on electronics, you never come out exactly to what the schematic says, you know. But you know, it was it was in range. All right. For example, if I measured a transistor, I got the uh, voltage drop between the uh, base and the collector to where you know it 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 showed that uh, the uh, transistor was conducting. I mean, you know, you could tell. I mean, it was biased properly, I should say. But, uh, like I said, that was, uh, I have, I just see, I don't know if I explained this before, but this, where's my little pointer at? This is the, uh, uh, where's that? Right here. This is the first transistor. Okay, these three these three leads here. This is the base. This is the collector. All right. If I put my uh, 
audio probe uh, from the signal tracer here, I get basically the same input as I do from the input of the from the preamp, okay, or whatever it's called, volume control. Actually, I guess it is. I get the same level here that I get here. I can turn the volume control up and I get clear audio here, okay? No matter what setting the volume control is on, I, I get the clear audio here. In other words, that's the, the input for the first transistor. Now here, the more I turn the volume control up, the louder and distorted, more distorted this connection gets. And of course, you know, this being the first transistor, anything output by this is just amplified by the rest of the circuit okay so in other words the it goes to uh, another uh, which is right here this is a driver here and there's another one here I think right right, right in here you got one two three right there so you have one transistor there transistor there drivers here and here and then your out your finals are, are down there but like I said anything coming out of this first transistor is going to be what's amplified and as as it is it's not it's not coming out good <laughs> so uh, and if we look on the other end uh, this transistor same transistor basically uh, I get on the base I get you know the same kind of audio coming in it's the same stuff and then turning the volume control again I have clear audio no problem on the collector of this one what I have is lower audio than going in in other words if uh, this is at say a uh, five level this would be at a three level I mean it goes down instead of up so there's our difference uh, and I don't understand why that one goes down it shouldn't but uh, there's our big difference right there so my plan for this next episode on this is to take and remove this this one and this one and just see compare the two and see if there's any you know difference I can tell in the transistor uh, is one lead shorted? You know, it's just like that uh, Ross. I mean, you know, we were getting some some audio through, but it wasn't quite what it's supposed to be. So um, that's my plan on that, and that should tell us the tale because I do believe the uh, problem with the uh, whole thing here is in this first stage because, like I said, whatever it comes out of here gets amplified, and I actually think this one may be a little low. So you know, I'm I'm looking to improve the gain on this end, and I'm and, and to unimprove the gain on this, end, if you want to put it that way. But I think there's some distortion being added to this one as well. I don't know. I also thought uh, another thing is these capacitors have not been changed in quite a few years, and you know that may be adding to the problem. So if I can just get these transistors out and check those and maybe find a difference and replace one of the bad ones or even both of them and uh, get some fairly decent audio coming through, then I can go ahead and, and change the uh, capacitors and be done with it. So that's what's coming up next on that. Probably not all that, but uh, some of it. So you guys have a pleasant day. I do appreciate you watching and we will see you. Thank <laughs> you.